So you can tell the story here that I'm playing out for you. A usual day, beautiful, successful practice, multiple locations. Now I had the beautiful house, the fancy car, multiple homes, in fact, boats, fancy kids. I, I joke I had the fancy dogs. And I remember, I'll never forget this moment, it was after my usual second martini after a stressful day, that I looked at myself in the mirror and was terrified because I didn't like the person that I saw. And I didn't know the person that I saw. I most certainly wasn't happy. And I realized that everything that I had been chasing for success, my vision of success was totally unfulfilling. And the first thing that hit me was shame. If I can build all these businesses, if I can create all this wealth and all of this success, what's wrong with me that I can't feel happiness? And what I did at the time was run. It was the only thing I knew how to do. I sold my practices in a fire sale. I went to a divorce attorney. I went to a bankruptcy attorney. The bankruptcy attorney laughed at me and said, you, you don't need to file for bankruptcy. But I was so willing to just turn everything over. I fled the state. If I could have, I would have fled my children. But the one thing I couldn't run away from was myself. And what started was a 15-year journey of undoing and learning again what success means to me, of listening to me, learning how to listen to my body, learning how to evaluate my own beliefs, thoughts, emotions, and actions. So I tell you this because I think it's a very common thing in our dental profession, is that we think success will bring us happiness. And we get stuck in this, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when $100 million. I'll be happy when $4 million. We keep changing the number. I'll be happy when my kids listen to me. That's a good one. I'll be happy when my staff finally does what they're supposed to do. I'll be happy when I find a good accountant. I'll be happy when I find a good office manager. We keep believing in this conditional happiness. And what I found is that success does not bring happiness ever. But actually, it's the exact opposite. Because when I started prioritizing my happiness, I became more successful than I ever thought possible, greater than I ever thought I could dream. So what we're going to talk about today is a little bit, and I'll go through here rather quickly so that we can understand. But I want you to know that when you feel good, that's when you can do good. And you know, this hits us kind of strangely because in medicine and dentistry and business, we don't pay attention to how we feel. We just plow through, push through, persevere. Resilience is the name. And let me tell you, I achieved a ton of success with that strategy. That compounding effect, I agree. If you show up every day with the same commitment, the same habit patterns, it will bring success. But will it bring you happiness? That is the question. And so I'm putting this up here. This is really hard to see in this light. So I threw in an extra slide. So I will, if you text this um, word emotions to this number, it'll come to you right away. And I'll send you a copy of this. And I'll tell you why this is important. Because what nobody talks about is emotions. And that's what I'm going to bring to you today, is understanding emotions. You know, I know many people might be able to identify with this. Have you ever had? This feeling at the end of the day when you feel like you're going to burst, you need to pee so badly. Like you just can't make it to the bathroom fast enough. Because you've been literally ignoring your body all day long. Or you get home and you're so exhausted from stress and overwhelm because you weren't paying attention to the incremental stress during the day. You just kept pushing through, pushing through, pushing through. And that's how we now find ourselves in healthcare with the greatest rates of burnout and overwhelm. Doctors and dentists are leaving this industry in droves. When I look at some of the statistics, I can't believe it. Who is going to take care of our children and of our future patients if all of the great minds are leaving medicine and dentistry because they're burnt out? 
So we've never learned how to live and understand our emotions, and then how to choose differently, or how to work with our body's brilliance to find out how to get over and how to climb up that emotional vibrational scale. So this is the emotional vibrational scale. And what I want you to see is that all emotions live in two categories. So there's only two states of emotion, empowered and disempowered. So stay with me here. We're gonna look here first at disempowered. This is below the neutral zone. So you'll agree with me, let's drop to the very bottom here of the emotional scale, vibrational scale. The very lowest is complete despair, hopelessness, grief. This is where my brother was in 2016 when he took his life. This is where so many of our children and our teenagers are finding themselves and why I see in the orthodontic practice today, 80% of my patients, my teenagers, are on some kind of psych medication. When before COVID, it was more like 20. Living in this space is the lowest state on the emotional vibrational scale. But if we go up a little bit, we get to sadness, anxiety, feeling unloved. Do you see how that's a little bit better than complete despair? And when we get to anger and blame, now we're go get feeling a little bit better about ourselves even more. When I learned this and understood this, it made me see my patients wholly different. That angry patient is doing much better than when they were in despair. When we feel anger, that's what fuels revolution and change. It's actually slightly more empowering. And if we knew this, it would make us feel better about our anger because we're crawling up that scale to feeling better. Doesn't mean we need to get stuck here, but it's validating because anger feels so much better than hopelessness. When we go up even higher, we get to worry, pessimism, and irritation. And now I understand my 15-year-old son so much better because he lives in this kind of space. We all have a habitual homeostasis, emotional homeostasis, and he kind of sits around here. So when he gets to worry or pessimism or just frustration, I know he's having a really good day. And I don't push him and force him to be up where I fly, which is usually up in the way up high in the good, good vibes. But knowing the scale allows us to also recognize when we're feeling a little bit better in the day than when we started out. It gives us a little bit more empowerment. The one thing I do want you to notice about this is everything in the disempowered states is a stress state. It is. It's sympathetic nervous system storm. It's fight or flight, freeze, fawn, and flop. Let's go to the next slide and we'll see that your sympathetic nervous system is always, always there. Now what is executive function? Well, executive function are those very things that allow us to do everything Chris was telling us about. All of what we know we should be doing as leaders and great business owners are our executive functions. But we're, when we're in a high stress state, our, our ability to have good executive function decreases. And this is where I hear from some of my clients who I work with who are incredible men and women in medicine and dentistry doing amazing things, telling me, Taryn, I might have ADHD. And maybe they do, but maybe it's just a high stress state because so many of these symptoms are actually due to high chronic stress that they're not paying attention to. Let's look at the empowered state, everything above the neutral zone. Why is this so important? Well, as you can see, as we climb up the emotional vibrational scale, we start with hope and faith and positivity, but as we get higher to confidence, inspiration, encouragement, compassion, Joy, love, those are those flow states that we all want to get to. Those are those states that we hear about the most creative, most accomplished businessmen and women, athletes, creators. This is flow state that they're in. 
when they're really feeling good about themselves, do you see now when you feel good, you can do good? Okay, I'm beginning to make a point. Love, compassion, purpose. When we can stay in this beautiful flow state, we make great business decisions. We make great personal decisions. We make great communication decisions. We make great empathetic and creative decisions. But when we're in a stress state, now we're experiencing all those mental blocks. This is where we hear about compassion fatigue from our colleagues. This is where we're stuck in survival mode. This is when our businesses don't take off, when we don't find flexibility, when we're addressing every problem from a place of fear or lack or scarcity. So I want you for a moment to imagine one of the last business decisions you've made, a big business decision. And I want you to ask yourself, how would that business decision look differently if you were able to make it from one of these empowered emotions and not from a place of fear or stress or lack? How would you have chosen to act differently, to perceive differently, to think differently? Every result in your business and in your life is a dead match to your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, and all of them are in your power to choose. In fact, you get to choose your experience of life 100% of the time. Can you control the people around you? Absolutely not. Can you control anything around you? Absolutely not. But you get to choose your experience 100% of the time. So I'm going to remind you about this beautiful parable. I don't know if you've ever heard this. These two fish swimming along. And as they're going, an older fish swims towards them. And the, fi the older fish says, hey, boys, how's the water? And they swim along, kind of irritated, the eye roll. And the one fish turns to his buddy and he says, what was that all about? And the other one says, yeah, what the heck is water? What's so interesting is we are all swimming in water that we're not even aware of. And those are our thoughts, our emotions, and our beliefs that we're not even aware during the day. We're just doing that class two prep. <laughs> we're just addressing when the front desk comes to you with her two week notice. We're just stressing out about our kid who told us she doesn't want to graduate from high school, right? Awareness is a superpower. Being aware of your emotional state, being aware of your thoughts at any point in the day is a superpower. Awareness of your emotions and awareness of your thoughts because our thoughts feed our emotions and our emotions feed our thoughts. And so it goes round and round and round. Here's an example. If you're feeling overwhelmed, I promise you, you're thinking overwhelming thoughts. If you're feeling empowered, I promise you, you're thinking empowered thoughts. So. Sometimes we're not even aware of the thoughts that are happening in our own heads. They're flying in so quickly. Many of them are habituated. Most of them are not ours. They come to us from society, from our upbringing, from our education, from the people around us, from social media. But when we pay attention to our emotions, we can walk backwards and find out what was the thought I was just thinking when I felt so bad about myself. You know, we all know this quote from Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. But does anybody know why? Exactly. So let's go on it. That's exactly, exactly it. And the most important thing that you said there was what you tell it to do. And many of us think that we're just slaves to our thoughts. We're just slaves to what's happening in our own bodies. But we actually have the power to choose. So I'm going to introduce to you today the thought continuum. And this thought continuum is something that I've adapted from multiple sources. So you will notice some consistencies here from maybe some places that you've read. But this one is something that I've developed on my own. And I'm going to walk you through the thought continuum. And the reason why the thought continuum is so powerful is because it allows you to take back the driver's seat of your own experience. So let's see how this works. If you follow this lemniscate, you'll see our thoughts 
impact our feelings, which impact our actions, which always have an outcome, which guess what friends, leads right back to your thoughts. So let's walk through an example. Let's say you have a thought that says, I'm terrible at sales, right? So how would that make you feel? What emotions would that, you're in a business, you need to sell. So <laughs> what emotions would that evoke in you if you paid attention to your emotions with the thought, I'm terrible at sales? Frustration. Frustration. Judgmental. Judgmental, self-judgmental, love it. What else? Failure, fear, stress, overwhelm, anxiety. Yes, those are the feelings that you'd feel. And then what actions would you take if you were living in fear, helplessness, anxiety, despair? What actions or inactions would come from those emotions? You wouldn't reach out. You wouldn't reach out, you might not look at your numbers, you wouldn't put yourself out there, you wouldn't invest in other ways to grow your sales, you might not have that conversation and learn, you might ignore or put somebody else in charge, right? Give up prematurely, right? And if those were your actions, what would happen in the outcome as far as your business is concerned? Okay, you guys know what I'm talking about. No sales, no growth, Right? And when you had no sales, no growth, nothing changes, what happens? You tell yourself, see, I told you. <laughs> I told you. I'm terrible at sales. So when we have a thought that comes as a result of an outcome, and we think that thought over and over and over again, we keep seeing evidence of it in our lives, guess what it creates? A belief because that's all a belief is. It's a thought you keep thinking. You might say to me, no, Taryn, my beliefs are ingrained. Yeah, they come from everything around you in your environment. They come from your childhood, from what people told you. When you were young, if someone said, she's shy, and then you acted shy, and then you saw evidence that you were shy, and more people told you you were shy, and your reticular activating system only let in the information from your environment about you being shy, and that became your belief. But it doesn't have to be true. Even your beliefs can be choices. And when we have feelings, and we take action on those feelings, and we keep doing that over and over again, that becomes our personality. We tell ourselves, that's just who I am. And we think it's finite, but it doesn't have to be. So all these incredible things that you've been learning here all today, when we learn them and in the space, we feel so empowered by it. We think, oh, I'm gonna take this home. And Chris gave me so many great ideas. And I got so many great ideas this morning from Emily. I'm gonna incorporate it and yet we go home and nothing changes. It's because right in this room feels safe. Our emotions are on one of those higher vibrations. But when we get home and we get down into the stress state, this becomes very difficult to navigate. You become what you believe and your thoughts create your reality every single time. And what I'm gonna tell you today that you might never have thought of is you will never outperform or outsmart the way you feel. Can you force yourself? Yep. Can you push yourself? Yes. I was the queen of drinking two martinis, getting up at 4 a.m., training for triathlons, being at work to see my patients at 8 a.m., pushing and persevering through the day in a stress state to only calm my nervous system at the end of the day with two martinis again and running that over and over again. Can you do it? Yeah. Does it feel like happiness? No. And is there even greater success for you and possibility for you in your life? Yes, because we're so much more powerful than we realize. What was actually happening is he's tapping into emotion. He climbed up that vib emotional vibrational scale. When he was first called on, he was a little nervous and shy to be called on, unsure, insecure. Maybe some of his beliefs that maybe he wasn't good enough 
right? But when he was given the space and time to tap into those higher vibrational emotions, that's why your why works. That's why your why works. Because when you feel good, you can do good. Many of us know what we should be doing. Many of us have been to many talks, and we know what we should be doing, but we just don't do it. And this is why. Because we're not paying attention to how we feel and learning how to walk up that emotional vibrational scale and take back our power. How to be aware. But awareness is only step one. Awareness is not the whole answer. You never have to believe a single thought you think. Now that's scary, especially for many of us who consider ourselves brilliant, intelligent people, where we got to where we are based on our smarts, right? But still, we never have to believe a single thought we think. So when we look at this, this thought continuum, I'm now gonna teach you how to reverse engineer the thought continuum. So using that same pattern that we understood, that same relationship, let's start with the outcome. We now know I want unprecedented sales and enormous bus business growth. That's the outcome I want. So what is the action that needs to happen in order to do that? Just name some things. Beautiful, beautiful. We know the answer, right? We know we can read books. Maybe we've gone to some great talks. Many times we know what we're not doing in our own businesses, but we're still not taking action. We keep asking people for permission. But yeah, we know that we know what to do. So sharing your business with passion, investing in your team, asking for mentorship, doing cold calls, all those things that we know we should be doing. Now in order to do those things, what kind of feelings would you have to feel? What emotions would you have to feel in order to have the confidence that Chris was talking about. Amazing. You just went right up to the top of that emotional vibrational scale. All day, All day long. You would have to feel confident, excited, passionate, love for the people you're serving because you're bringing them such an amazing gift in terms of your service. Confidence, love for yourself, value in yourself. And in order to feel these feelings, what would you have to think? What kind of positive thought, Deva? What would you say? In order to feel these feelings, what would you have to think? Beautiful. Let's just start with that. I love me and I love you. And remember that whenever we think a thought, it can be anything. I love the impact my business is making. I love my business. I love the people I serve. It can be any of those positive feelings that bring you up on that higher vibrational scale. And you know what that is. I can't tell you. Positive affirmations are amazing, but they don't always work because you have to believe them. And remember, here's the magic. A belief is just a thought you keep thinking over and over and over again. And really, there are only three disempowered beliefs that all beliefs, limiting beliefs fall into. They are, I'm not good enough, it isn't available to me, or I won't be loved or accepted. The fear that speakers have of getting on stage and sharing their truth is that third one, or sometimes the first one, I'm not good enough, I'm not a good enough speaker, or I'm not gonna be accepted. The message I have is not gonna be received well, or it's not possible for me, they're all so good. All of our limiting beliefs fall into one of those three categories, and it's true for our patients, and it's true for our team members as well. And that's powerful when you as a leader know where the insecurities lie. They always fall into one of those three categories. So talking about subconscious marketing, now we're talking about changing the subconscious. Here's what I want you to remember. You are not your thoughts. You know, we think we are. We think that our thoughts make up who we are. But when you go to bed at night, your thoughts turn off. Does that mean you cease to exist? 
No. You are the being who has a thought. You are the being who has thoughts and who is capable of choosing a new thought. And sometimes it feels really difficult. Trace was talking about those thoughts that come at you. Yeah, they do. But remembering that those thoughts are not always yours. They come at you from everything around you, from what you just read. Maybe you've been paying attention to the fear mongering on media all week long and your thoughts now are tinged with fear and lack and anxiety, right? But we always get to choose a new thought. You get to feed yourself the thoughts you need to think to be the person you need to be at any given moment. And I loved the process that um, Chris was talking about, about pausing and taking a breath. Because in order to do this jump, we need to do something called strengthening our vagal tone. And this is something that athletes and the Navy SEALs know very well how to do. All vagal tone means is how quickly you can go from stress state to calm. And vagal tone is measured by the variability between heartbeats. So it's, we're actually looking at heart rate, but it's very closely related to stress state. So when cardiologists look at your vagal tone, what they do is they put you on a bicycle and they make you stress your body out with exercise and then they measure how quickly your body comes back to calm. The same is true with stress state. And we actually can increase and flex our vagal tone muscle by certain practices to go faster from stress to calm. And what a brilliant superpower as a dentist or a business owner. Because as Chris said, we can't control the people around us, so are there gonna be things during the day that stress you out? Yep. Are there gonna be triggers? Yes. So we can't live our lives in a constant happy state. Happiness does not mean being happy all the time. It means recognizing when you're in one of these lower disempowering states and then using your body and your mind to calm and then choose a new thought. So what are some things that can increase your vagal tone? And I think many people have hit on these today. Definitely exercise. So um, what they found was more intense exercise actually makes that more rapid, that vagal tone um, strengthening more rapid. But even walking is enough to increase your vagal tone. The key is to do it on a consistent basis. So that's why working out every day feels so good. right? We're doing these things, but we're not sure why. Physiologically, that's what you're doing. When you're walking or moving or exercising, you're also doing another very important part of nervous system regulation. That's what I call it, nervous system regulation. And that is breathing. So Chris mentioned taking a deep breath. So what I'd love to teach you now is a very easy way. It's called alternate nostril breathing. There are several breathing exercises, but I love this one because it works so well. So if you will, where you are, you can follow me, but first I'm gonna show you and then we're gonna try it together. And this is one of those things that induces the vagal nerve, which is a part of your parasympathetic nervous system, and does it very instantly. This one you can't do behind a mask, but I'll show you one that you can do behind a mask. So alternate nostril breathing, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb and you're gonna depress your, right, your thumb on your right hand. I'm right-handed, so you'll have to flip it if you're left-handed, but we're gonna pretend everyone's right-handed. You're gonna depress your right nostril you're gonna take a deep breath in through the left. You're gonna hold it using your ring finger. You're gonna depress the left, release the right, and exhale through your right. Take a deep breath in through your right. Depress the right, release the left, and exhale. Take a deep breath in through your left. Depress the left, release the right, and exhale. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the right. 
Depress the right, release the left, and fully, fully exhale through the left. Feel your shoulders drop. Take a deep breath in through the left. Depress the left, release the right, and fully, fully exhale. Do one more. Take a deep breath in through the right. Depress the right, release the left, and fully, fully exhale. With your eyes closed, you can drop your hand and just slowly return to your calm breathing and notice the calm in your body. Notice the breathing as you breathe in and you breathe out. Notice the presence in the moment. Notice the cool air on your skin and maybe the way the chair is holding you up. Notice if there's any tension in your shoulders or your back. Simply relax. And as I count to three, I want you to slowly come back into the room. One, two, three. Open your eyes. How many of you can feel a difference in your body? Yeah. And it took very few seconds. We can do a breathing exercise even behind the mask with our patients. You can do it at any point. Chris demonstrated it when he said there was something that happened that triggered him, stressed you out, someone spoke to you a certain way, you had a sudden fear or anxiety, and you stop. Take a deep breath, hold it, and exhale. The best ways to activate your vagal, vagal nerve and to activate your parasympathetic nervous system is to breathe slow and with intention and to make the exhale slightly longer than the inhale. So another breathing technique that I teach a lot of my clients, my coaching clients, is called 478 breathing. And that's when you're noticing you're with a patient or you're in a situation with a team member and you really get stressed out in the moment, you breathe in for four, hold it for seven, and exhale for eight. It's doing a few beautiful things. It's not only activating your parasympathetic nervous system, but it's giving your mind something else to focus on to stop the negative, negative and disempowering emotions, the thoughts that lead to the uncomfortable emotions. Dancing, yoga, what Emily taught us this morning about tapping our bodies, these are great parasympathetic nervous system activators. Meditation is another beautiful one. But one of the things that I warn my clients against is if all we're doing is meditating in the morning and having a beautiful gratitude practice at night, which I highly recommend, but the rest of the 15 hours of the day we're living in stress, we're not actually supporting our nervous system. So I actually ask my clients to incorporate breathing breaks preemptively in their day because guess what? Dentistry is stressful. Business is stressful. That's the truth of it. So we allow ourselves during the day to get back to calm. So one of the things that I really am very proud of is my nervous system regulation for dentists program and for anybody online or anybody attending Action to Win this, this week, I'm giving you this um, code for please enter in only 99 for a huge discount on this course. But what this course is great for is it's an audio course, so you can listen to it on the way to work, and it gives you some really great support, learning, and practices of how to regulate your nervous system. It's not just for dentists even though it says for dentists, business owners, anyone in healthcare can benefit from this as well. But it not only talks about those practices I was talking about in terms of regulating your nervous system, but mindset, and we get into some subconscious rewriting. Because really, what's really driving your actions is your subconscious programming. You know, many years ago, I was very by this incredible woman who in 2013, Diana Nyad, 
swam 111 miles from Cuba to Key West, Florida without a shark cage. She was the first human ever to have done so, which is phenomenal. But what's even more phenomenal is she did it at the age of 63. And what's even more phenomenal is she did it after 30 years of trying. So she started at the age of 33, the same swim. She did many other swims, but this one always eluded her and everybody else trying to do it. But at the age of 63, she did it. And we ask ourselves, what was different over those 30 years? She tried five times in those 30 years. What was different? Was it new technology? No, she was swimming. <laughs> Same swimming. Maybe a different bathing suit. Maybe new nutrition. Was it um, her physical strength? No. At 63, her body was not as capable as it was when she was 33. What was it? When she got to the end, she climbed, she got water, she was all swollen and puffy from the salt water and all the stingrays and jellyfishes that had stung her. Her lips were all swollen and she kind of staggering. It took her 47 hours to swim that swim and never could touch the boat. And she said, I have a few things to say. Number one, you're never too old to follow your dreams. Number two, it takes a team. It looks like a singular sport, but it takes a team. And number three, knowing how you feel is a power at every single moment because you can make new choices and paying attention to how you feel. Life cannot be pushed through, forced through. We have to be kind and recognize the emotional state we're in. And because of that, half a mile from finishing, half a mile before she got to the end of her 111 mile swim, she stopped to tread water to sing happy birthday to one of the people in her support, her support crew on the boat. Can you believe it? Because she knew how important emotion was. And tapping into that love for herself and for her team is what got her through. Half a mile, it was that person's birthday all day, but she was saving that for when she really needed to dig deep and find herself in that empowered emotional state. If I leave here today with no bigger message, I want you to remember that when you feel good, you can do good. That is the core of what I do now, is supporting clients in medicine and dentistry and business to recognize their emotional state and to learn how they can tap into the knowledge that that emotional state brings them and then learn how to use that knowledge to take the next step because awareness is a superpower, but it's only step one. We now need action, intentional action, with knowledge of where we're trying to go, with knowledge and clarity of our destination and knowing that when you feel good, that you can do good, gives you permission to take back that power. Thank you so much.